Hello there, folks. That is folks on Patreon who are listening in audio only, and also people on YouTube who should be able to see us as well, recording this um, Monday moot. I'm Michael. And I'm Rupert. Welcome. <laughs> and better tell the folks why we're recording this in video. Well, yeah, this is... Uh, it's a regular podcast that we do for our Patreon folks, and this happens to be the 50th Monday Moot. Monday Moot is where Rupert and I think of a topic and just go for it for 15, 20, it has been known, even half an hour, you know, <laughs> something to do with prehistoric yeah. archaeology, our thoughts and um, the, um, yeah. <clears throat> The, uh, well, the the winding roads of our troubled minds. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, there, there are so many things. It's, it's wonderful. There are so many things in archaeology where you read something in the press and, uh, and then read it again and you think, really? <laughs> you know, and so that's what we tend to think about you know, uh, when there might be other ways of looking at things. Anyway, it seems to be popular on our Patreon page. Whether it's got legs on YouTube as well, we should find out. But anyway, we thought we'd take the shameless opportunity to alerting you know, folk on YouTube or elsewhere yeah. uh, to what they may be missing, or part of what they may be missing, uh, not being uh, 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 within the Patreon community. Uh, so. I have to make a confession. Uh, I yes, have only on. just realised that, once again, I am... Oh, OK, it's not doing it now. I'm on my squeaky chair. <laughs> Just keep still, that's all. Yeah, but I, I have two chairs in my studio. Uh, one of them squeaks a lot and the other one doesn't, and Mike is always saying to me, use the non-squeaky chair, and I always forget. Uh, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, whether, wherever you're watching this or listening to this, welcome to the Monday Moot. <clears throat> now... Um, for the last months, it seems, Rupert's always had the idea about what we should be uh, challenging <laughs> ourselves with, what the topic for discussion is. Um, but I, I noted this one. There's an article um, come up. I think it was a, I think it was a, a BBC thing. Anyway, it was BBC, the point yeah. is there's a, a, there's a henge in Norfolk called uh, Armingham Henge. And <clears throat> was it Norfolk or Norwich? Norfolk. Oh, double check me if you like. I'm Why to. don't you? <laughs> you know, because this is committed it's, it's now. It's Norwich. It's, uh, right in Norwich. Yeah. Okay, cool. I stand corrected, folks. Uh, anyway, that's a good thing. We always like to self correct as we go. <laughs> um, yeah, but the lead archaeologist, uh, Andy Hutchison, is that right? Dr. Andy H Hutchison? Have I got that right? I Are you so. going to double check me on uh, that? Well, okay. I can do. Yeah, but the claim is what we've got is eight uh, one yes, metre is. wide um, timber posts, or the remains of. It. And by the remains, of course, we mean um, the post holes in the ground. Um, uh, and the claim is that these have been ritually burnt at some point, burnt down. The whole uh, timber henge um Monument, whatever you like, has been at some point, probably on the solstice, um, burnt in a, in a ritual conflagration. And as is our won't, Rupert and I are saying, not so fast. Mm. <clears throat> there is evidence that can be interpreted as that, but is that the only possible interpretation? We say no, and mm. we also, I think, say that the forensic uh, evidence probably wouldn't stand up in a court of law um, as, no. far as, as far as being robust enough to make such a claim. Mm. Um, we've got several avenues to go down. Um, and, of course, this is something <clears throat> that we see time and time again, so there's a general aspect to this, not just Arming Hall Henge, uh, but ever we see claims of ritual burning, whether it be uh, dwellings or monuments or, or whatever... Um, we just put a question mark out. We're not saying mm. it's not true or can't, couldn't have been, but we're just saying, hold on, hold on. Yes. You know, archaeologists yeah. have to make claims as part of their part of their job. Um, you know, they have to come up with a story of some sort. You know, I think what we're just saying is, um, 
uh, when you come across these things in the mainstream media um, with, with headlines, um, just... You know, look at it from a different perspective. Mm. Anyway, sorry, Rupert, go on. You know, uh, what is no, no apology in contention? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, <clears throat> do you know what? One of the most interesting things about this, because it, it is, uh, it, it's everywhere in archaeology. You you read about ritual burnings. In fact, if you go into Eastern Europe, there is even uh, a, a, a thing called the burnt house horizon, which is a term given to. Uh, a, basically a geographical spread of this thing of burning down entire settlements. And uh, and it is considered, broadly, that it is a ritual affair. Um, and one of the big problems with any of this is that the evidence that supports it, it's just a matter of interpretation, that the evidence could just as easily say... That it was uh, that it was accidental. It's just how you want to interpret it, um, and uh, and I think you know one of the points that we always make as a fundamental is that we shouldn't forget that this is at a, a time when people were building houses out of wood and lighting them with naked flames, um, you know. And if it's a timber building with a thatched roof. Uh, then, you know, it's it's not going to be difficult uh, to burn that. Um, so, Shut up. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> said the man living in a Watland daub timber house with a thatched roof. That's a good point. Roof. That's a good point, yeah. Yes. But at least yeah. you don't light your you, you don't light your house with naked flame, do you? Yeah, but the point is, I mean, try getting insurance. Yeah. It's a... It's tough. It's tough. We got there in the end, but, you know, I digress. <laughs> hey, well, are, so are you suggesting that the Burnt House Horizon might actually have been a succession of insurance jobs? <laughs> 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 Neolithic insurance companies. What a good idea. Uh, <laughs> but um, I think, you know, from a, realistically, uh, you know, because we have to be even-handed here, uh, that... that there are a number of reasons why people suggest, uh, researchers and archaeologists suggest that it was deliberate, uh, d deliberate slow stroke ritual. You know, I think, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that there, there's there's various reasons why you might deliberately burn a house down. That's not necessarily making. I mean, to call it ritual immediately gives it a flavour that is not necessary. You know, the thing is that uh, if you've got a house that is completely infested with, uh, you know, over years, uh, it's become more and more infested with uh, with wood boring beetles, say, that kind mm. of thing. And it's just be it's just getting to the end of its tether. You might burn mm. it down just to be clear of all of that and start again. You know, there's there's plenty of indigenous peoples around the world today who routinely replace their uh, timber and thatched roofed buildings every, it depends on the culture, but, you know, five to 15 years. It's just what they do because they get tired. Um, so that, that could be a very big reason for, you know, you don't have to make it ritualised for that to be a reason. Um, mm. You know, it That's could as be... far as dwellings are concerned. There's any number of reasons yeah. why a, <clears throat> a timber and thatch uh, building can can burn down. That's kind of uh, a given. <clears throat> to get to the more you know sort of focused thing, it doesn't just apply to Arming Hall Henge. There are many other henges, and I can't name one for the moment. You know where this ritual burning thing has been applied, even to some um, uh, timber palisaded enclosures. There's well, Must curses. Farm is a very good example. Oh, Must Farm. Well, look, again, we're back to buildings then. Yeah. Um, you know, of, of uh, you know, accidents will happen. Mm. <laughs> It um, seems that, well, and that's a, another where specifically ritual burning down and, uh, has, has been uh, claimed for it. Anyway, uh, slight digression. I was going to say um, there are um, curses, I'm going to say curses enclosure, uh, certainly in Scotland with timber 
uh, palisades that have been claimed to have been burnt d- down. But it's this thing. Um, oh, also, I think, if I'm not mistaken, West Kent palisaded enclosure. Uh, there are claims of deliberate... Um, Was that a burning? Bur- okay. I, yeah, I think, think so. Um, now, in my head, the claims of burning... And remember, we're talking about timber posts, large timber posts that have been sunken quite a way into the ground. And it seems to me in my head that the evidence given for um, ritual burning or deliberate burning is the presence of burnt wood or and or or charcoal. And we're going to get into uh, even the uh, descriptions about that in the post holes and we're saying well, do the forensics actually hold up if a timber post burns in situ does it actually leave charcoal or burnt wood in the post hole itself i say i don't think so but then i'm not a well it, it could <laughs> but that's why we need to get picky on it because yeah. uh, because there's you know there's interesting detail about that and so it's 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 still a question of how these things um, are interpreted. Um, mm. I mean, for example, we, we don't know, um, and although I have asked the question, I haven't had clear answers, uh, but we don't know, for example, whether uh, when archaeologists say they found charcoal in a post hole, whether they're just talking about the presence of burnt wood, uh, you know, evidence of burnt wood, or if they actually mean charcoal, which in certainly in uh, modern terminology, charcoal is a very specific thing. It's wood that has been burnt uh, in a, 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 a as low an oxygen environment as possible to create charcoal deliberately as a as a separate thing. Well. Um, okay, if you're finding actual charcoal in a pit, then you could say that that was deliberately done. But I don't think that's possible, because if you're saying that a timber post has burnt down, well, you wouldn't have put charcoal under the timber post on the basis that you might want to burn it down at some point in the future. Um, I think that they're just talking about burnt wood in the socket. Now... If you're talking about just there's evidence for burnt wood, well, there's all sorts of reasons why you'd burn the bottom of a timber post. You know, you you treat wood with fire to stop it rotting. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, and in fact, if you want to be extra picky, and we uh, and we want to say that no, it really is charcoal, then you could, if you were really clever about it, and I'm pretty sure the builders of these places knew what they were doing that you could actually light a fire, a very controlled fire of a certain size, in a pit, a socket, sink the post on top of it, knowing that it would continue burning just long enough to char the post to seal it, to stop it rotting, but equally that a low enough amount of fuel that placing the timber post on top of it would put it out once it had charred it. Um, I don't think that would have been difficult for them at all. Mm. Uh, so, you know, you've got to be so careful about these interpretations. You know, mm. um, to call everything... And that's all we're saying. That's all we're saying, you know. I mean, and they very may, may well be true, I'm sure. I mean, look at Burning Man, the, you know, the, the huge yeah, festival yeah, that takes yes. place. Yeah. <clears throat> Where exactly, which desert does it take place in? Oh, is it Arizona or isn't it or Nevada? Yeah, uh, yeah. A- anyway, one of the flats, and uh, you know, there's no end of burning going on there, into and has been for many, many years. Every year, and the things um, that they build oh, just, just to burn down. So you, you, so you can you can look at uh, from that perspective. You can look at these monumental burnings and say, okay, we've always done it. Maybe, yeah. Uh, it's just the and I don't scale. doubt for a moment that people were coming to, together en masse to these places and having mm. a jolly good time. I'm sure there was <laughs> loads of loads of <laughs> yeah. loads of burning and stuff, and <laughs> evidenced by the fact that there is burnt wood in in the pits uh, in yeah. the uh, surrounding um, 
uh, trench, the s- surrounding uh, ditch. Yeah, yeah, do you know what the thing is? That, 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 that's another example of just how do you want to <laughs> interpret this? Because, yeah, yeah. Uh, because they've interpreted uh, this evidence to say that the, the structure was burnt down ritually and that the the old like the so the spirit of the old house was included incorporated into the building of the new uh so you know yeah. they they've put it in the ditch uh, the henge ditch and stuff like that and you think well no, they mm. haven't incorporated it in the new they just didn't take it away they've just kind of swept yeah. it out the way to tidy it up and then built a new thing you know it, it's you've got to be so careful how you interpret any of these aspects mm. um it's funny the how funny, yeah go on well i was gonna say that the, the funny thing is it, in our scenario we envisage upright poles a, a lot of the time uh, in, in these kinds of arrangements you know huge hinges smaller hinges you know this inevitability some at some point there's been upright poles serving whatever purpose that we always imagine horizontals in between you know like they're not just there to be poles they're to support some kind of uh, other infrastructure um to what purpose we don't know but that possibility because those kinds of uh, structures can't remain, and you know, as it is, we're only looking at post holes. We're not looking at actual actual posts. So everything else must have gone. So Lord knows what else must have been in there in structure. And given that structure, if in our scenario, actually not too hard to set like to a post because if you've got horizontals, you, you know, if anybody's dealt with a bonfire or anything, the, the horizontals go up easy, not a problem. Um, <clears throat> But in their scenario, there is there are no horizontals. So what I'm thinking is, well, how in their imagination are they seeing po- upright posts in situ uh, being burnt t- to that degree? That there's, Further, there's two that, things. Here. Yeah, go on. You finish. And well, then well I, I just before, before yeah, uh, I'm wondering: has anybody ever done uh, uh, a? Uh, uh, an examination um, of this problem from an academic point of view. You, you know, what you can and cannot burn with the mm-hmm. tools available, with the materials available in, uh, in the Neolithic. Well, there, there's been a hell of a lot of experimentation with fire and right. nobody has yet managed to create uh, the same results as archaeologists have been digging up for ages no one's been able okay. to do that um there's uh, a couple of things firstly just to get it out of the way um one of the things that uh, is said a lot is that they can tell from the intensity of the fire at the base um you know w- where the, it would have been the base of the posts from the intensity of the fire that a huge amount of fuel must have been put there to accelerate the fire to burn it down yep. well the thing is that uh, there's all sorts of things that they're not allowing for just from a maybe this is just a practical thing so for example uh, we know about timber posts because of the post holes that remain the sockets we don't know what was in the house or whatever this building was. So there could have been uh, wooden benches all the way around. There could have been even more uh, uh, prone to high temperature burning. There could have been grain. They could have had sacks of grain, which would have, good grief, that would have burnt like crazy. Uh, So, you know, anything like that would accelerate the temperature of a fire. But... One of the things that um, that makes this particularly interesting is if you go back to the Burnt House Horizon, which talks about Eastern Europe more than um, uh, more than Western Europe. So you're talking about Romania, Hungary, those sorts of regions, uh, Bulgaria. Um, now the the Burnt House Horizon refers to a style of building 
more related to so there's the Kukutani uh, culture particularly yep. um, yeah. uh, so uh, Neolithic you're talking about buildings with timber uprights but wattle and daub walls and uh, what they're finding in these burnt remains is a and the huge kinds of remains. Well, just one second. The kinds of remains we're talking about are also relatively large buildings, large rectangular buildings. Not maybe the image that comes into mind of the circular, low thatched. Um, thing. We're talking, yeah. Yes, re- rectangular buildings. Yeah. Well, they're talking about entire <laughs> settlements. You know that exactly, uh, yeah. that uh, you know the Burnt House Horizon is about the burning down of entire settlements, and uh, you, there is a huge amount of clay. So they're saying that they've uh, they've been making the wattle and daub walls just by you know it's basically compacting mud, um, uh, but the fire has fired the clay, and that's what they're finding. And they know that it's uh, fired clay, but not deliberately fired clay necessarily, because uh, you, you know what they're digging up out of the ground is it's as if you've put it in a kiln. Um, you know, it's changed mm-hmm. colour and. Blah. So mm. you've got all these buildings which do show fired clay must have been very hot and there's entire settlements burnt down and it's because that there's entire burnt settlement uh, there's entire settlements burnt down that they say it must be ritual and uh, and you think well hang on great fire of london if you've got <laughs> if you've got highly flammable buildings all in close proximity to each other and one kicks off <laughs> it's not a big stretch of the imagination that a lot of them are going to um mm. equally and again playing devil's advocate because we have to is that what they have found in the burnt house horizon is that there seems to be a fairly regular burning down of settlements like every 80 years something like that ah, right, so yeah. um uh, so you could say well maybe if you're building a, a structure in that sort of style that maybe that's a natural lifespan before it starts to become or you know it starts to lose its integrity um and uh, you know uh, roofing posts start to give way or or what have you uh, we don't know. We don't know. All we're saying is that we don't think it's necessarily a ritual. I mean... Yeah, and also what we're doing, I think, is just calling out that um, default position of, of going towards a ritual, which just tends to put to one side any other explanation. That's mm. all. It stops the conversation a bit. Mm. And what we're trying yeah. to do, we're trying to keep the conversation mm. uh, going. We're not claiming, you know, that we're right, that they're wrong. Uh, uh, that's not the, the purpose. It's just... It's not that kind of Just and inviting dry. people to be more saying. playful with it, I yeah. think. Be more playful but, with it. In what, you, yeah. I think that <clears> one of the biggest shockers for me was the suggestion that must farm uh, might have been a ritual burning. Now, f- uh, for any of you who don't know about Must Farm, it's um, uh, it's a, a dwelling in a well, quite a large uh, a dwelling uh, in Cambridgeshire, and uh, uh, it was not far from Flag Fen, indeed. Um, yeah. and uh, and it was burnt down. The the the, the most recent. Uh, interpretations when you uh, 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 lab uh, results and what have you. The implication is that it burnt down within a year of being built. Uh, now, when you say within a year, uh, they can tell that from various things, partly the insects that are still in the wood, uh, mm. things like that. Um, now, that could have been significantly less than a year. Um, but just probably not more than a year. And the suggestion is that that is ritual. Well, I don't think, personally, I don't think that if you're going to burn something down, if you're going to build something to burn it down ritually, then I don't think it would have even lasted that long because you'd build it and burn it down like Burning Man stuff. Um, And also the fact that 
some of the stuff that they found in Must Farm, like f textiles on the loom, you know, still being worked, unfinished meals, uh, the <laughs> fact that there's dog crap uh, in the building. You know, I, I think if you were going to make something ritual, then I don't... I, you know, I might be missing something. You'd, I don't think you'd inhabit it and settle in it and be working in it. No, and, and I certainly don't think that you would leave yeah. dog crap to be sent to the gods. You know, I, I, I don't think you would. <laughs> I might be wrong. Um, yeah. You know, we shouldn't forget that this is a time when superstition might have been a major part of everyday life. And supposing... You had a family living somewhere and they died of some horrible disease or just some weird disease that these people had never seen before. So maybe they burnt it down because mm. they wanted to get rid of the evil spirits or whatever. We don't know. We don't know. Uh, so many possibilities. But we just shouldn't leap to... You know, timber buildings, naked flames shouldn't necessarily leap to ritual. What I want to see is a method devised for interrogating these things. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the, the impression I get, and I may be wrong, is that the, despite you know, the painstaking efforts that archaeologists make to record things in situ, to record things in, uh, in context, so that the relationship to be uh, one another and, to, you know, uh, and in time and to you know, whatever else was going on at the time, is that despite all that detail, these interpretations seem to be um, comparatively superficial. So I want to see, you know, I, I'd like somebody to devise a, a, a more detailed and more forensic way of uh, querying uh, these, these, the evidence. That's all I'd like to see. And I'd love it, you know, if the evidence could be unequivocal, one way or, or the other. I don't mind. That's, that's fine. But don't let's stop the argument because we somebody says it's it's ritual. I right. So I'm going to e end this now. <clears throat> I just with, thought of something else. Never mind. Oh no, really? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just thinking that, that. Hang on, you've dug a hole in the ground, and maybe you uh, you would burn a fire in it. So the charcoal in the pit. Maybe yeah. you would burn that to uh, uh, to get rid of any possible unpleasantness that could infest the uh, the timber, have your Maybe. fire and then clear the charcoal out. So you're left with a, kind of a skin, if you like, of charcoal, but it's served yeah. its purpose, you take it out. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. That was just a thought. Fair enough. A little addendum there. But I think it's time to draw this to, to a close. Uh, with the um, sorry, not sorry, ranting about <laughs> ritual, <laughs> not ritual. Uh, mm. Anybody that knows this well knows it's uh, an avenue we uh, go down <laughs> very often and maybe a bit too often. <laughs> maybe Do you think? We maybe. Should, maybe. Yeah, let's... I can't we should, we should it. Just, out of me... Uh, I, I know, but like it, it's it's a bit our, our hobby horse, and we we mustn't be a one trick pony as far as our uh, examinations of uh, prehistoric archaeology are concerned. So you know, with that uh, bombshell, <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, I think uh, it's time to to wrap up. Wrap up. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching, you folk on YouTube. Don't forget, this has been a Patreon special. That was the fiftieth. Yes. Monday moot, and uh, next week will be the. the other, I have to say, well, I mean, the, the clues in the title, we do them every Monday. <laughs> just in we case. Do. Just, <laughs> uh, we do. Um, and so, various other things. So, yes, if you're watching this on YouTube and you fancy coming and joining us on Patreon, we would love to see you there. Links below, of course. Yeah. With that, we'll say bye bye for now. Cheers, folks. Take care, folks. Bye. bye.